if you're planning to go to Rocky Mountain National Park in 2024, you're going to need all this information. Right now we're in Rocky, we're in the Bear Lake Corridor. This is Hallowell uh, Park. This is really pretty. Um, off season is great. That's one of our little hints, but we'll yeah. get to that at the end. <laughs> we're making this on March 31st. So this information is current as of that date. Yes. And there's a couple of things that I'll tell you that I wasn't able to find all the information on yet. Sorry, we sometimes hear turkeys in the background. Um, now, this is just for Rocky Mountain National Park. I don't know what it's like in other national parks, so um, make sure that you know this is only for Rocky. And uh, we have a Trail Ridge Road photographer's guide um, down in the description. So you can check that out. You can download that for free. Now, a little bit of stats. Rocky is 415 square miles. There are over 300 miles of hiking trails. Lots and lots of wildlife. And about four years ago, in 2020, they decided to implement this pilot program for timed entry tickets in the summer and the high season. So this is fairly new. It's still a pilot. That's why it changes every year. They're trying to make it the best for the park, the wildlife, and the people that visit. So have a little patience with this if you're coming in the really high season. In 2021, just to give you an idea, 4.4 million people. Million came to Rocky. Oh, if you're looking for a special pass that's specifically for locals or Coloradoans, there isn't one. And that is across the board for any national park. There are changes this year, so pay attention. <laughs> all right, we're gonna give you all the information you need straight from the NPS, the Rocky Mountain National Park website on the National Park website. Okay? Yep. Yeah. And our own personal experience, of course. But mm -hmm. any any of these points are coming straight from their website. So you can trust this information as of March 31st, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have some ways you can kind of avoid the extra ticket, um, what wildlife you might see, photography, things. I mean, we got the goods, okay? All right. So first off, you will always need a park pass or an entrance fee. 24-7, yeah. 365. And Rocky is open 24 hours a day. Yep. Yeah. It's open now 365 days of the year also. Yeah, it is. It never closes. It's so cool. But even if there's no one at the entry kiosk, you still need a park pass. <laughs> okay? So that's always the same. You'll mm -hmm. That won't change. But... You can get that online. Oh, yes. We'll or, talk about that. Uh, at the key entry kiosks, there's usually a QR code if there's not a ranger available. So that you can purchase it oh yeah as you come in i forgot about that thank yes. you thanks for telling me um no cash though no cash zero cash but this year between may 24th which is memorial weekend through mid-october 2024 you will need a timed entry permit during peak hours what does that mean don't worry we're going to tell you <laughs> <laughs> um, but back to the park pass you can buy a one day a seven day an annual or even a lifetime if you have particular, if you qualify. Like Steve, you've got America the Beautiful. America the Beautiful for uh, seniors. For I seniors. got the senior discount, which is was like $70 for the rest of my life. Yeah, so pretty awesome. Yep. Um, and then <clears throat> again, that's cash, uh, no cash, credit only. The um, timed entry ticket, uh, you can get that on recreation.gov. You cannot buy that once you get here in person. No. No, you can't. So you need to either call or go online. Just make yourself a, an account at recreation.gov. Uh, and that covers so much of the country anyway. So, I mean, it's just mm -hmm. a good idea to have that app. So the, the whole park pass, the one you need, 365, um, you can get at recreation.gov. And, I mean, that's just a good app to have anyway. Yep. Well, there's a ton of parks that take recreation.gov. Um, you can get that in person, like Steve was saying. And in Rocky, these are the three places. The entry stations, Fall River entrance here, Beaver Meadows here by Esses Park, or at Grand Lake on the other side of the mountains. 
You can also go online to the USGS.gov and get other passes like America the Beautiful, National Parks, Federal Lands Pass. So there's a couple yeah. different sites. You can buy the park passes at the visitor centers with cash or credit at any of the park entrances, Beaver Meadows, Fall River, or Kawanachi. Prices range from $15 for a one-day individual pass, like if you're not in a car, like if you're walking or biking, um, all the way up to an annual pass of $70 um, per person. So um, there's a wide <laughs> range of prices. Okay. Okay, there are six free days in the park. Yes, there used to be five. So new for 2024, they've added another free day. Now this is in place of your regular park pass, the one you need all the time. So these are the six days that you will need a park, uh, that are free days, that are free days. Uh, January 15th, MLK, birthday. April 20th, first day of National Park Week. Um, the new one is June 19th, which is Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, August 4th is the anniversary of the Great America um, Outdoors Act. September 28th is National Public Lands Day. And November 11th is Veterans Day. So those are days you can get in the park. Now, half of those, three of those, are during the high season. And so? You need a timed entry ticket. <laughs> so you can get in free without the park pass, but you still need that $2 timed entry ticket during the peak hours that we're going to tell you about. Time to entry tickets. This is where everyone's the most confused. It's not confusing. We're going to break it down for you. Um, and you can look at the graphs and charts yeah. and things on the site. And it is different from last year. Yes. So you need to pay attention. Pay attention. Okay. So the new dates are May 24th through mid-October. So what they've changed here is that you will need a time to entry ticket in the Bear Lake Corridor all the way through October 20th. But the rest of the park is only through October 14th. The Bear Lake is very, very popular. Um, so I can see why. Very, very popular. And most of the sites have very limited parking. True. For the no amount of people that go there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. These timed entry tickets, you're going to need that recreation.gov account because you cannot buy these in person. So... Now, what if you don't have a computer or a phone? You can call them. So there is a, a number that you can call. Um, go to recreation.gov to get that timed entry ticket um, or call them. Now, it's only $2 for your car, not per person. So that's a little different. And you can only reserve one a day. <laughs> and I hadn't really thought about this. If you're not sure what time of day you're going to come in, just make up your mind and get one because that's the only chance you get. <laughs> if you want to come in during that high season, high time of the day. Now, we'll, we'll give you some ways around that at the end of this video. Okay, here's another change. They've played around with the names of these timed entry tickets. Now, what they're doing is saying there's timed entry tickets and there's timed entry plus Bear Lake Road. So it's the same idea, but they're calling the tickets different. It used to be time... Part, timed entry for the park plus Bear Lake and then rest of the park. And they're not calling that anymore, but it's the same idea. If you want to get into the Bear Lake Corridor, which is where Sprague Lake is and Bear Lake is and all of those hikes out of Bear Lake, that's the Bear Lake Corridor. Moraine Park is in Bear Lake. If you're coming in September yeah. for the Elk. The Discovery Center. <clears throat> Discovery Center. Oh, yeah. Is that, Bear Lake. That's in the Bear Lake Corridor. So, yeah, Sprague Lake, Bear Lake, Moraine Park. Okay. And those are required between 5 a.m. and 6 p.m. Okay? Same as last year. It's very, very busy and limited parking. Now, if you've gone there in the off-season, you're looking at the Bear Lake parking lot, like, this is huge, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. No, it's not. <laughs> that fills up immediately. And then a few minutes down the road, there's a huge parking area with a little shuttle that will take you in. That also fills. So trust us that that will completely fill. Now, can you get into Bear Lake Corridor and then leave and go somewhere else and come back? You can, but you can't get back in until after two. So that mm. you can. Yeah. Um, so if you have an earlier day, like say you have a nine o'clock in the morning pass, you dink around for three or four hours and you're like, hey, let's go get lunch. 
You can get yep. lunch, see the rest of the park, but you can't get into the Bear Lake Corridor again that day until after two. Mm -hmm. So pretty simple. Yep. Yep. Okay. The rest of the park, which is just now called Timed Entry, and that which includes Trail Ridge Road, the highest continuously paved road in the U.S., um, those are only between nine and two. So that's the only time you need a timed entry for the rest of the park. Now, keep in mind, these tickets cover all kinds of areas of Rocky. Um, did you want to take over for me of this? No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> You're doing great. Well, thank you. Um, Trail Ridge Road, uh, Lumpy Ridge, Lily Lake. That one trips everybody up because it's not in the park going through yeah. Fall River or Beaver, but it's included. Uh, Long's Peak. Peak, yep, Wild Basin, East Inlet, and North Inlet. Now, what happens a lot of time, like at Lily Lake, Lily Lake's pretty small, is that there, you'll get there before a park ranger, potentially. Put your timed entry ticket on your dashboard um, or have it in your pocket that you, when, you, when they get there, you can show them. They will kick you out. <laughs> they will mm -hmm. turn you around. So make sure you have that printed, too. Um, now, these timed entry tickets are for entry in a two-hour time block. No matter which kind of timed entry ticket you get, you can go in any time in your two-hour time block. Yes. But not outside of that time. No. So right. you need to show up, and you need to be ready to stand to, to wait in line to get into the park. Mm -hmm. No refunds. No transfers. Print it if you can. Cell service is very limited. <laughs> so screen cap the whole ticket they have to be able to see the whole thing or just print it mm -hmm. um and just know that like if you're here a little bit before or a little bit after they will turn you around okay so they're pretty they have to stay pretty strict about that it's nothing to do with you this is a system that twenty-two thousand people a day have to follow okay so pretty simple so far but when can you get these tickets when are these timed entry tickets available they're not available all the time. Yes. <laughs> so here's what you have to do for the timed entry tickets. Get that recreation.gov. We're going to say that a lot of times. Get that app or sign in. Get, a, get an account at recreation.gov. You cannot get tickets in person. So on May 1st, 2024, tickets go uh, up for reservation for May 24th through June 30th. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to be here till the end of June, you need to be online on May 1st for timed entry tickets all the way. If you're going to be here June. before the end of June. Yeah, before the end of June. Yeah, yeah. Um, so keep that in mind. You have to plan a little ways out if you want to get into the park during the high season. And then after that, it's the first of the month for every month after that, for the month in advance. Yeah, so for the, for the 1st of July, that's for August. August. Yeah. Um, the 1st of June is for July. The 1st of uh, July is for August. The 1st of August is for September. 1st of September is for October. And any tickets left over, mm -hmm. you know, you can snatch up tickets like that too. Um, so that's that's pretty simple. Just be sure to plan ahead. Gone are the days of just running up to the Rocky anytime you want in the summer. They're just gone, okay? <laughs> um, remember, time to entry is the same if you have a large group. So if you are bringing in a busload of scouts, let's say, you still need a timed entry for that whole car or that whole bus plus your park pass. Now, what if you have two buses? Well, you get one for each bus, but the person who reserved that timed entry ticket must be in that vehicle. So keep that in mind. Your scout leader who's not coming with you can't make that reservation because they also ask for your ID. Okay, so same for large groups, um, same for motorcycles. Each individual vehicle, so must a motorcycle, have. yep, must have time entry ticket made by the, one of the people on the motorcycle. So, just so you know. So, let's talk about Bear Lake Corridor for a second. The most popular one, people get very confused. It's pretty simple. You get a timed entry ticket to go within your two hour window of time. Now, those two hours start right at the beginning of the day. 5 to 7 a.m. is the first block. 6 to 8, 8 to 10, 10 to noon, noon to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 6. Mm -hmm. Okay, pretty simple. Um, and again, if you want to re leave Bear Lake and come back, you can after 2 p.m. The everywhere else outside of Bear Lake Corridor is still two-hour time blocks. So it's 9 to 11, 11 to 1, and 12 to 2. 
Okay. Now, with the Bear Lake Corridor, yes. your timed entry ticket gets you into the main park, but you also need to be within your two-hour block to get into Bear uh, Lake Corridor, where oh. there's another kiosk that will check your uh, timed entry ticket and, and ID. Now, that's right by the Beaver Meadows entrance, but during peak periods, like Saturday afternoon, Saturday morning, there will be a line of cars at both entry points. So you need yes. to be aware of that. Oh, okay, good point. So um, <laughs> when you're coming in and you have a Bear Lake Corridor Pass, exactly what Steve says, go to the Beaver Meadows entrance if you're right about time, and just like a quarter mile into the park, there are gonna be a left to go to the Bear Lake kiosk, which will also have a line. <laughs> yes. You have to be through both kiosks in to your get into- in, in your time block. In your time block to get into the park. But seriously, it's like maybe a quarter of a mile in yeah. for your Bear Lake turn. Um, if you're a tiny bit early, there's some parking along that main road and you can just wait for your time to go into the park. Yeah, yes. good point. Now, can you go into Fall River? Yeah, but you have to drive all the way through the park to get to the Bear Lake entrance. So give yourself at least at least 20 minutes for that, unless there's wildlife in the road. <laughs> <laughs> now these timed entry tickets, they sell, um, that covers about 90% of the park's maximum parking capacity, which works out to 20,000 visitors a day or 7,200 vehicles in a 24 hour time period. Um, so they're still working on it. You know, it's still a pilot program. But if you don't get one of those, don't worry. They do hold back 40% of those timed entry tickets every single day that you can get the night before. This has changed. It is now those 40% go on sale at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, not 5 p.m. like last year's. Yeah. So let's say it's Friday night and we're like, hey, let's just see mm -hmm. if there's entry into the park on Saturday. We have to wait till 7 p.m to get on recreation.gov to look, just so you know. That is new. All right, here's some alternate ways to enter the park. Woohoo! <laughs> also very frequently asked question. Uh, this is interesting. Walking or hiking into the park, you need a timed entry ticket. What if you're biking, Steve? Nope, don't need one. A bicycle. You do, you do need your regular park pass, but yeah. you don't need a timed entry ticket. Yeah, very interesting. Weird. They do ask if you're in a large bicycle group, just let them know. Now, the Backcountry Wilderness Camping Permit, that permit counts as your timed entry reservation. And you may enter the park on the first day of your wilderness backpacking trip. Now, what we noticed last weekend when we were driving around, people asked, can you just, is there any like roadside camping in the park? And there's not. But what we noticed was there's wildlife, wildlands, wildlands, wilderness backpacking, parking designated parking overnights areas yes. that is not park and sleep in your car that's park your car and hike to your backcountry site yes um so don't think that you can just park in there overnight because you have the wilderness permit you can't park your car leave it go on your hike all right so there's no place that you can just drive in park on the side of the road inside rocky at all and i don't think in s it's park proper either i looked that not up. in the city proper no, no. Other camping. Okay, so there's a few campgrounds in Rocky. Not that many. There's a lot outside the park, don't worry. But Moraine Park Campground is still closed for renovations. <sighs> they say <laughs> that they're going to reopen in June of this year, of 2024. Sometime. There is no time of when exactly. You never know. You know how construction projects go. And we're probably not going to know until, whoops, look at that, park reservations have opened or you see it on the news. So nothing in Moraine Park at this point in time in the end of uh, March. Yeah. Uh, so that, those renovations are affecting the campground, of course, but also the northeast section of Moraine Park near the Discovery Center, which they're doing a pretty good job there. Um, a portion of the Bear Lake Road, just west of the Discovery Center, and along Moraine Park Road. You'll see it, you'll see the construction. But what they've changed from last year is it's no, they're not doing construction anymore at Fern Lake Roads. All right, so that's, okay. construction's done. Yep. Sweet. Now, as far as camping goes in the park, those reservations fly off the shelf, fly. And a lot of the campgrounds have um, six months. So you can, let's say, um, 
I don't know, a date, but the, exactly six months before you want to camp, you need to be on reservation. Um, With your hand on the enter key. Yeah, uh, <laughs> recreation.gov, I think it is, um, to get those passes for those particular campgrounds six months in advance. And they sell out fast, especially with Moraine Park campground closed, okay? And within the May through October time frame, you can only camp seven nights total throughout the park. So even if you got two different reservations, that's it, seven days during that peak season. Um, they are only $35 a night, which I'm surprised about. That's a pretty good deal. Access and senior pass holders get a 50% uh, off. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and within the May through October time frame, you can only camp seven nights total throughout the park. So even if you got two different reservations, that's it. Seven days during that peak season. Um, they are only $35 a night, which I'm surprised about. That's a pretty good deal. Access and senior pass holders get a 50% uh, off. That's awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. If you are camping at Aspen Glen, Glacier Basin, and Timber Creek campgrounds, you can initially enter the park. That'll count as your timed entry ticket at 1 o'clock on the first day of your camping reservation. Sweet. Which is also the check-in check time <laughs> yes. for the campgrounds. If you want to come into the park earlier in that day, just get a timed entry ticket separately for that. There's turkey still behind us. <laughs> uh, let's see. Glacier Basin, Aspen Glen, Camp and Gla Aspen Glen Campgrounds will have access to also the Bear Lake Corridor, as well as other areas of the park. If you're in Timber Creek Campground, you'll have access to the park, but not Bear Lake Corridor. So be sure to check that when you're doing that. Now there is one campground. I know, I feel like they're getting closer. That's so yeah. funny. Okay, uh, there is one campground that is first come first serve, and that's Long's Peak Campground. And it's tent camping only, beginning in July. And as far as I can tell, it does not include a timed entry ticket. So even if you're going to Long's Peak, you need a timed entry ticket. Yep. Okay, if I'm reading the website right, okay. So that's pretty much camping. Your camping pass gets you into the park. What I couldn't find was if you're staying in the park for three days, can you leave the park and come back in? Is that count as your timed entry? I think so, but mm -hmm. double check that when you make your reservation. We live so close that we rarely, uh, I don't know if we've ever camped up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's camping. Now there's also shuttles. There's buses from Estes Park. Now, Rocky itself, the park, has two free in-park shuttle bus routes that operate daily from May 24th through October 20th, but they only really go in Bear Lake Corridor to Bear Lake and Marine Park. There's none outside of Bear Lake. And I, you know, I've seen shuttles, I thought somewhere else, but I guess they're all in the Bear Lake Corridor. Mm -hmm. um, and then the park also offers shuttle service from Estes Park to Rocky and the ride shuttle stop. That's called the hiker shuttle. So the hiker shuttle's interesting, okay? And I feel like this has changed a little bit from last year too, or they've just finally put some clarifying information up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a hiker shuttle. It only leaves from the Estes Park Visitor Center. Nowhere else in town can you hop on to the hiker shuttle, just the visitor center. So reservations are required. These are still like kind of like a timed entry ticket. You get the two dollar reservation, timed en like reservation mm -hmm. that acts like that. Recreation.gov. But what's cool is that covers up to four people. So oh. if you and four, you know, four of you can get that one two dollar ticket, show up at the visitor center, hop on the hiker shuttle. I think that's pretty cool. And then you do have to count small children and babies. Yep. Everybody counts on there. Okay. Um, if you have more than four people in your group, f the next group has to make their own yeah. ticket. Yeah. And that's a different person yes. has to make the ticket. Right. It's only one ticket per day per person. Right. So if you have six people, one person makes their own little group of four and gets that $2 ticket. And the other two people, one of those people gets a $2 ticket for their group. Oh, and you can also only make one reservation for the hiker shuttle a day. So don't vacillate between what time and think you can get tickets for all day. That turkey is bugging you, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Okay, we'll go find it in a second. 
Uh, so don't dilly dally, don't vacillate, just make a decision, pick a time, do it. You can't buy up all the tickets for the day because you're feeling lazy. Is that harsh? Yeah. I don't care. Um, okay, there's just too many people that come here that, you know, that we have to accommodate. Uh, so, yeah, again, these are released like. Now, this is something clarifying. They're released like the timed entry ticket. So July 1st is for August shuttle bus, uh, hiker shuttles. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit different. Now, last year, in 2023, they had uh, additional reservations after 5 p.m., like, just like the others. But there's no information on this year. So I would say if you want a last minute hiker shuttle ticket, it's probably going to be 5 or 7 p.m. the night before. You can look for you some extra. Check, yeah. yeah. Um, they do say the hiker shuttle takes 45 to 60 minutes to get to the parking lot in Bear Lake. So if you're trying to catch a certain time or meet up with someone, just keep that in mind. Give yourself a, at least an hour to get up into the park via the hiker shuttle. And online they have a great map of where it goes. Oh, my goodness. All right. We have some notes for you before we get into uh, alternate ways to get into the park. That um, construction project at Fall River entrance is so close to being done. Uh, so the Fall River entrance is, there's one lane open right now. And that's how it was all last year too. So they were making everybody go to Bear Lake, which is n normal. And we drove through Fall River today, again, end of March, and th they've made a lot of progress. Yeah. But, don't know if they'll make it by Memorial Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be touch and go there. It is, yeah. Um, and also <laughs> keep in mind that the town of Estes Park is doing a lot of construction too, especially over at Beaver Meadows, which is by Bear Lake. Uh, so <laughs> give yourself extra time to get through the construction in Estes Park as well. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, will there be a fast pass? kind of a thing ah, at either fast of pass these. lane yeah like if you have a regular like an annual pass or something will they have a special lane just to get us through in early 2024 rocky mountain national park implemented transponder devices this is similar to the fast pass lane cards but this will automatically get you through that fast lane. So right now they've got a fast pass type lane for the transponders in the Beaver Meadows entrance and they're building one into the new Fall River entrance. There are some things you need to know. This is about credit card size. It sticks to the window of your car. It's not removable. It's not transferable. It's very inexpensive. It's only $15 and I think you can renew it. Yeah, renewal is $5 for each year. Now you have to have a, a valid entrance pass, but it needs to be a, an annual pass like the Rocky Annual Pass, America the Beautiful Interagency, Senior, any of those that are an annual pass. And then you can renew it for $5 a year. It sticks onto your window and it is only open during non-timed entry ticket times. So in the high season, during the times of the timed entry tickets, you can't, you can't use this. Everyone has to still show their timed entry ticket. It is very hard to find this on the Rocky National Park website. Because you can see here, it says it should be under um, plan your visit transponder devices. But when you go to plan your visit, um, it's not in here. <sighs> there isn't anything that says transponder devices. So I'm telling you now, this is the website slash plan your visit transponder dash devices. So that is what that looks like now. At this point, there is like two days a week that you can actually buy this. And let's see if I can find it. Okay, transponders you can buy at the Beaver Meadows Visitor Center on Thursdays and Sundays until May 2nd between the hours of 9 to noon and 1 to 4. Beginning in the first part of May, May 5th, They'll be, uh, be available Sundays only at the Beaver Meadows Visitor Center from 9 to noon. It's a fairly small window of time that you could actually buy these. So you'll have to wait till you get to, <laughs> to Estes or almost to Rocky to buy your transponder. And they have a lot of nice Q&A on their website for things. 
uh, all the little details. But really what you need to know is if you have an annual pass, you go to that Beaver Meadows entrance during those very restricted times, you can get this transponder to stick on your windshield and use during non-timed entry ticket times. Went in the fall last year to Bear Lake Corridor because we're gonna go to Bear Lake. So we were at Beaver Meadows, really long line, like a mile long. I'm not even kidding, yeah. at least a mile line. Uh, so which takes about an hour to get through. But once you got closer, there were some extra rangers out there just saying, hey, if, if you already have a pass, come over here. So that was nice. Um, they do say that there's no guaranteed parking anywhere in the park. So even if you get the pass to get into the park, no guarantee there's parking. <clears throat> Sorry about that, but the parking goes really fast too. Um, a note on one Trail Ridge and Old Fall River um, Road open. Trail Ridge Road, that big long road that can lead you all the way over the mountains, it uh, opens about the end of May. They try, depending on they, weather. They, they try to have it by Memorial Day, but there's no guarantee. Yeah, and that's open sometime in October. It closes, depending on snow. <laughs> um, Old Fall River Road, which is that alternate one-way road to the Alpen Visitor Center, that's around the 1st of July to the 1st of October. So pretty small window for that. And we have videos on both of those if you want to kind of preview what those routes are like. Um, weather changes dramatically. So weather between Estes Park and in the park, it can be so different, so different. And what I find happens is that if you're in any of these like rocky groups, and you ask people, oh, I'm coming in two weeks. What's the weather like? And someone says, oh, it's great. Yeah. No, do not, do not go by what people said the weather or any of the conditions are in the park at all yeah. if they're not there at exactly the same time you are. Yeah. Well, like right now, the sun is shining and it's snowing. And it's snowing. <laughs> so we got snowstorms. If we go up much higher, we're going to get snowstorm. And it's just so crazy how fast it changed. We're really not exaggerating. The weather really does change quickly. So if you're like, oh, cool, that person was there two weeks ago. It was really nice t-shirt weather. I'm not bringing a coat. Oh my gosh, bring a coat. <laughs> Those yes. kind of things. Yes. Yeah, if you're very early in the season like May, you will need to be prepared for snowpack trails at the end of May, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so things like that just be really careful of who you talk to in facebook groups go right on to the rocky website and they will give you current conditions right there a lot of people try to save a buck and stay in the grand lake or granby side which is on the west slope um and then they ask okay so i'm staying in granby or grand lake can i get to the bear lake corridor sure <laughs> If the road's open. Yeah. Um, Weather permitting. Yeah. So I would say, just a guess, don't don't quote me on this, but you could probably get away with it in July and August, pretty for sure. Yeah. Even if it snows, it's going to be kind of like this. You might have limited visibility, but you can still get through. They're not closing the road. Mm -hmm. Anytime outside of that, you're mm -hmm. taking your chances. Yeah. yeah. The closer to the July, August uh, interval, the higher the probability you can get through. Yeah. But yeah. no guarantee. Right? And so I saw people in groups last year that said, oh no, it's September, October, and I'm staying in Grand Lake. I can't get to the other side. You just, they couldn't. Yeah. Right? So, oh, look at that, more snow. Um, so just keep that in mind. Travel can have snow at any time. Oh my gosh. Um, be mindful of the elevation. Um, you're around 11,000 feet at certain parts of the park. You need to drink a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of water. Give yourself two days to acclimate it uh, like a mile high in Denver first, if you can. Um, Tylenol sometimes helps. If you can get all the way to the Alpen Visitor Center, they often have little packets of Tylenol. Uh, snacks for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be out of breath though. Yep. And just really, if you have any kind of breathing issues, look it up and get an okay from your doctor even. Yeah. Um, and actually, even at that, fit people have been struck by elevation sickness. Yeah. If your headache gets too bad, get down fast. Go, go to lower altitudes. That's the only, uh, that's the only cure. Elevation sickness is a very, very serious thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only way that you can yeah. help with that is to get to a lower elevation. Just, yep. just go back to town. So we're being really serious about that, okay? Um, also, in the summer, in the afternoon, there will be signs everywhere for lightning storms. Storms move in 
pretty regularly every afternoon, noon to somewhere around there. Yeah. So if you're hiking up above tree line, try to be out of there in the afternoon. Yeah. Also, unfortunately, wildfires can happen any time in the park. We've had some doozies the last few years. So if places get shut down for fires, just be super respectful of that. Uh, this place is high, like high desert, and so it's really dry. I mean, it's snowing right now, but fires can really devastate the place. So be careful. If, again, you're going to come in kind of those shoulder season avalanches, I think they just took down the avalanche warnings. So for now, mm -hmm. keep in mind, you may, when you interact with a ranger, it could be a volunteer, especially September during the elk rut. There's a lot of people that volunteer up here. I have a couple friends that do. So be respectful of them. They know what they're talking about. There's super limited cell service. <laughs> <laughs> Over like on the Bear Lake Corridor kind of side, Beaver Meadows, it's a little better. Yes. I, oh, okay. I, I think so. We have Verizon, just say so you no. Know. Um, but really on Fall River, not so much. And no. Elfin Visitor Center, almost none. Um, I've gotten bars up there a little bit sometimes, but would yeah. not count on that. <laughs> And we think that Sunday evenings are a really good time to come to the park, even in high season. So if you can't get that, come yeah. in the evening. Um, you've heard me talk about this before, but uh, pets in the park. No, please no. Um, I mean, they can be with you in your car and in your campground as long as they're on a six foot or shorter leash, okay? In established roads, like a paved road, not a trail, or in a parking area or in your established campground. You are not taking them on your backcountry hikes. You are not taking them a hike through the meadow. You're not taking your dogs in here, okay? I love dogs. My main job, my whole business is photographing dogs. Do not bring them to the park. <laughs> um, I forgot to bring this book out here, but my friend Don Wilson wrote the book uh, 101 things to do in Essence Park before you die. Uh, it is an awesome resource. So if you're wondering what to do or see in Essence Park, restaurants, different things, great book. So that's another resource mm -hmm. for you. Oh my gosh, I can go on and on, but let's keep going. Ways around the timed entry ticket. Ooh, the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, those darn timed entry tickets. Listen, it's not that bad. It's not. Okay, mm -hmm. go in the off season. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful right now. We did a whole video about how great it is in the off season here. Yep. This time of year, March, April, oh, bear with the weather, weather changing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Go in the off season. Yep. In the Bear Lake Corridor, go before 5 a.m. Or after 6 p.m. You can do that. It's a 24 hour park, especially if you're doing yep. those sunrise long, long hikes. You can get here at three in the morning. Yeah, and if you get here before 5 a.m., there's probably parking available. <laughs> yeah. By 6 a.m., nah, not so much. Now, they'll, they're going to start getting lines by probably 4.30, 4.45, so just note that. But yeah, come in at those times. If you don't want to do Bear Lake Quarter, you want to drive Trail Ridge, let's say, it just has to be before 9 a.m. or after uh, 2. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard. So that's a really easy way to get around those. Just really make sure that you're patient because they absolutely will turn you around if you're yeah. not there during your time to entry time. And there are lines. Big lines. Waiting to get in. Yes. So if you want to get here before 9 a.m., probably should plan to try and get here before 8.30 or even 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, I've, I've been in lines. We've waited 30 minutes and still didn't get through in time. Yep. So. Yeah, and they'll turn you away. It's exactly. Uh, another way around it is that hiker shuttle we told you about. That seems pretty posh. You go in, you can walk around, you can do all the things you want to do in those Bear Lake areas, especially for you hikers. Take a picnic with you. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. uh, go to another park. <laughs> there are other parks outside of Rocky really, really close. Um, so if it's a bust for you, there's still this huge mountain range with all kinds of things to do. Enter via bicycle. What do you have to say about biking in Rocky, Steve? <laughs> if you're a masochist, it's great fun. Been there, done that. I've, I've, I've ridden Trail Ridge from Estes Park. <sighs> it's tough, but it's fun. <laughs> 
Yeah. I've, I've been blown off the road a couple times also because of high winds. So there's that. <laughs> it's often very windy up here. Sunblock. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Sunblock all the time. Um, and actually the YMCA uh, camping is very close to the Bear Lake Corridor entrance. So if you're going to buy a it would be probably pretty easy from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that, that's an easy entrance. Yeah. 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 Um, carpool. Go with some friends. Uh, I, I host a workshop for pet photographers in August, and I bring them up on the last day. It's fun. Um, okay. Also, do a guided tour. I think this is super cool. So there's those cool, like, open-air bus things. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to do that. So we're going to try to do that this summer and show you what it's like. Those look super cool. They even go down Fall River Road, <laughs> yeah. which is sketch. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you know how good your driver is when you can do Fall River Road without incident. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so a commercial tour or a guided tour, you do not need the timed entry ticket, right? So because they've taken care of that for you. Now, make sure you get someone who's qualified, who's like done the training and got the actual certification. There are some people who will just get their own timed entry and just bring you through. Not the same. Someone like my friend Don Wilson, she gives photography tours up here in Rocky. Go, she's the same person who wrote the Estes Park book. You can take a photography tour with her. The uh, horseback riding yeah. is pretty cool. There is a Glacier Creek livery, which I think is right there at Sprague Lake. And that's inside. They said they'd be doing it again this year. Uh, so you can book your reservations there at High Country slash Glacier Creek Stables, Rocky Mountain Horse Riders, horserides.com. Um, and that's pretty cool. So you can get in. I think it's, uh, at, well, that will act as your timed entry. And you can get in two hours ahead of time. So that's Before cool. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So if say you got a um, a two o'clock horseback ride at that stable in Bear Lake Corridor, you can come in at noon. That's that's awesome. Uh, that sounds like yeah. a really really fun thing to do. So if you're up for a horseback ride in Rocky, wow, you could do that. No time to entry ticket needed. So those are your ways around. And and trust us, we've done it. We've done it so many times. The days are very long in the summer. I mean, if you get up here at sunrise, you're going to have to be there here at like 4.30 or 5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, the sun sets not till like 8.30. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of time outside these timed entry tickets that you can enjoy the park or drive across Trail Ridge Road. Trust us. Okay. Photography, our thing, clearly. Um, we have a free guide for you. The Photographer's Guide to Trail Ridge Road that goes from Deer Ridge Junction on the... Um, Estes Parkside, all the way out to the Alpine Visitor Center, all the stops along the way, thanks to Photograph. This coming year, we're going to do Alpine Visitor Center all the way down to Grand Lake. Yep. Ooh, we're going to do a photographer's west side. guide. The West Slope, yep. So watch for that. Um, for photography, bring all kinds of different photography gear. Although your phone, it's shocking how much you can see from the road. Yeah, modern phones are really pretty good and there's often wildlife right next to the road <laughs> there was a turkey in the road this morning we've we've come across every kind of animal in the road so have your phone yeah. ready too but if you're pretty serious we have our wildlife gear but we also have wide angle for landscape because you're going to see it all which is so awesome mm -hmm. it's so awesome uh things that we've seen okay we were here last weekend and saw most of these elk bighorn sheep foxes eagles moose hawks elk of course um yeah coyotes we'll, we'll be coming out with that video shortly here no i think it's already out it's already out you okay. put it out today yesterday today yeah so that video is already out oh okay cool <laughs> but did you know that the rocky website also gives you all kinds of information now when you're in facebook groups they tell you to not share locations which i'm totally on board with but there are some locations that everybody knows about already. So this is not a spoiler alert or anything. This is just facts. And you can find this on the Rocky website. Uh, so what they say is that there are 60 species of mammals, 280 birds species, six amphibians, including the federally endangered boreal toad, one reptile, which is the garter snake, <laughs> 11 species of fish, countless insects, and a surprisingly large number of butterflies. Isn't that cool? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can go fishing here. I didn't put that in here because it's just how to get in the park. But there are fishing passes uh, that you can look up. Okay, but the problem is that despite good intentions, we can scare them. We can disturb their habitat. Uh, we're trampling ground. So don't mess with them. Okay? Yeah. Keep a respectful distance. Oh my gosh. Do not run up. I've seen people do this almost and they run up with their phone. Don't do that. Okay? There's this thing called Zoom. Zoom. (laughs) And a selfie with the moose in the background. Way over there. They are aggressive people. Aggressive. (laughs) Um, And also don't feed them. When you're up at Rainbow uh, Curve, there's going to be chipmunks walking right up to you looking real cute. Can I have your you know, pirate booty, (laughs) you know, your little puffs. No, please do not feed them. It harms them. They have a whole 480 miles of food. So please don't feed them. Don't bait them for a photo. I've seen YouTubers in other countries that do that. Don't do it. It's really, it's really harmful. Yeah. Yeah. And don't walk up to them. Be walk, uh, drive slow. We've had all these animals jump out in front of us, like literally a moose, bang, there it was. Mm. <laughs> it's startling that it happens. Um, so, and on top of that, it's all illegal. <laughs> Harassing or feeding wildlife is yes. absolutely illegal yep. in all national parks, okay? Uh, but here are some favorites that they talk about. Uh, okay, so elk can be seen anytime, anywhere. Uh, most popular in the fall during rut, which is mating season where elk are our meadows and where the meadow and the forest meet. We saw two herds just today. And they're here up in the park uh, during summer. And then they go to lower elevations like where we live in the fall and winter, which is kind of cool. Uh, bighorn sheep. I mean, it's called sheep lakes for a reason. They can be mm-hmm. seen as sheep lakes near the fall river entrance. Um, from May through mid-August. Right now, they're in the big Thompson Canyon near where we live, which is the river there. Moose, they're often in the willow thickets. You can see those all around. Um, And sometimes in the middle of the road. Yes, (laughs) and on the west slope, the Kawanachi Valley on the west side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otters are rare, but they were reintroduced to Colorado. I didn't know that. Um, So you may not see those, but there are otters here. I'm so jealous of the Tetons because they have otters right there. (laughs) Mule deer, same thing. You can see them in town. You can see them in the park. They're often everywhere. Be very careful at dusk because they're in the road. Bats over lakes and ponds at dusk and dawn. That would be super fun to see. I think I've seen them. Uh, Marmots and pikas up on Trail Ridge. They're fun. Above tree line. Yep. 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 On the tundra, Trail Ridge Road, all over in there. All Fall River Road. Some of the main birds you're going to see are Clark's Nutcrackers and Stellar Jays. We've seen the uh, Stellar Jays today. But you can also see Golden Eagles and Prairie Falcons, which I would love to see up here. Here's another really sought after one for photographers. Ooh, white-tailed ptarmigans. They're really (laughs) hard to spot, but everyone loves to see them in the tundra. You just have to look really carefully because they really blend in. And then the water bird, American Dipper. They're so cute in their little streams. Yep. Hopping along. Uh, hopping up and down. <laughs> and that's just like tip of the iceberg of what you're going to see up here. Um, but in conclusion, it sounds like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple for the most part. Yep. Mostly what you need to know is you need that Rocky Park Pass 24-7, 365, except for those free, free six, day, six free days. So I guess it's not 365. Mm-hmm. Anyways, <laughs> the regular park pass that you get anywhere. And then you'd have the timed entry ticket for the high season. May through October. Yep. That's really, that's, that's it. That's, that's, that's really point. simple. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, be patient. You're, you, you and I, and we're all one of the 20,000 people that visits Rocky per day. Every day. Every single day. <laughs> um, so just really be patient. Everybody else here is here for a good time too, okay? Um, We have a video on the Bear Lake corridor, so you can see what that's like mile by mile. We have the uh, Trail Ridge Road mile by mile. We have the Fall River Road and how that looks because everyone thinks that's pretty sketchy. Um, So we have all kinds of videos on here in our Rocky playlist we'll share with you. And we're going to make that West Slope video this summer. 
Cool. So there you go. If you have questions, please type it. Type them in the comments. We always miss one of the points in here, but we'll gladly look for mm. look it up for you. Okay. Check out the MPS uh, Rocky website. All kinds of stuff is in there. You can call the park too. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, have a great time. Get here, breathe in the thin air. <laughs> uh, be careful if you drink. I should have said that because one beer will feel like two at elevation. But just have a fun time. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Um, just take pictures and take experiences with you. Don't gather anything, of course, when you're here, but experiences. Yep. Uh, I can go on and on about Rocky because we absolutely love it here. But we have turkeys to fight. We have, we, yes, I can hear them. <laughs> calling out to us during this entire video. Steve's like, that's why he keeps turning. He's looking for the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> but enjoy your trip to uh, Rocky here in 2024. And uh, if you see us, say hi. Yeah. Yeah, we love to see you. Okay, that's it. We gotta go find turkeys. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs>